Okay guys, look, I promise you the title of this video is totally not a clickbait. It's something actually that has been around for a little bit of time, but because so many people are unaware of it, we thought we'd talk about the ways that you could potentially be exempt from PLAB and be able to get registration with the General Medical Council without any exams. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. There are certain countries which, if you graduate from them, you don't need to take any exams in order to get GMC registration. And by that, I mean you don't need PLAB, you don't need really anything. You, on the basis of just graduating, your primary medical qualification makes you eligible for GMC registration. And that's what we're going to get into today. Hi guys, my name is Abriz and I currently work as a doctor in the NHS and what we are talking about today is how your primary medical qualification can potentially make you exempt from having to take PLAB. As you know, PLAB is one of the many ways that you can get GMC registration and GMC registration is how you can work as a doctor in the NHS. Now, how are the other ways we've talked about in many videos previously, but today what we're really getting into is if you have a relevant European primary medical qualification from certain EEA countries, GMC will accept that this medical graduate degree as a way for you to get registration. Now, as you all also know, there are two types of GMC registration. One is provisional registration and the other is full registration. You would need to see exactly what your country would qualify you for. For instance, there are some EEA countries which will never be eligible for provisional and will only be eligible for full registration, while there are others where you have the option of either having provisional registration or full registration. If you're an individual who is in a country that's going to be a provisional registration type of place, you all know that you would need to undergo the United Kingdom Foundation program or their version of the internship or otherwise create or otherwise complete an acceptable pattern of internship somewhere else, maybe in your home country or any other country that meets the acceptable criteria as laid out by GMC. But if you're graduating with full GMC registration, what you have to do then, as you all also know, is either you're eligible for an FY2 standalone or you could apply directly to NHS jobs in a trust grade or non-training job role. Naturally, the first question you guys are going to be wondering is like, okay, wait, wait, it breathes. We get it. All right, fine. I'm graduating from Romania and I see that on the GMC website. If I graduate from Romania, that means I can get GMC registration. But I mean, obviously that means I have to be Romanian, right? Or at least I have to hold a passport from one of the EEA countries, right? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your nationality is. That used to be the case a couple of years ago. They took that all away. If you're graduating from any of the EEA countries listed on the GMC website, it does not matter what your nationality is at all. At all, guys. You do not have to be a national of the country. You do not have to be someone who holds an EU, EEA, or UK passport. You would be getting it on the basis of your graduation and nothing else matters. So remember that what you need to look at right now, if you are somebody who meets this criteria, if you're looking at the list right now, first see, are you eligible for provisional or full registration and then make your plan accordingly. But remember, it doesn't matter what your nationality is. The natural way that most of us progress in our careers in the United Kingdom is at some point we would want to enter training or progress in some way, which would require us to take postgraduate exams like MRCP or MRCS. Just because you have gotten GMC registration that has made you basically exempt from PLAB doesn't mean you're exempt from any of these postgraduate exams or postgraduate steps that you would have to take in order to be considered an equivalent trainee in the United Kingdom. 
Remember, PLAB is a licensing exam. It's not a postgraduate qualification. It's just something that's saying, all right, yeah, you've done something and we think that means that you're fine to come and work in the UK as a licensed doctor. It's not actually something that you would want to put as a post-nominal or something that you would attach to your name and say, oh, look, I've done this. Because like I said, it's a licensing exam. So if you're graduating from a country that gives you full GMC registration, and at some point you want to enter into specialty training to become an endocrinologist, you would at some point have to take MRCP and any other associated exams required for that pathway, as well as fulfill the portfolio and competency requirements along the way. While it's really great that graduating from these countries do give you GMC registration, they do not let you just opt out of the entire program. To follow up on this, all right, now you're someone who's gotten full GMC registration and you're like, I just want to go ahead and apply for a training post. Maybe it's GP, maybe it's internal medicine, peds, whatever. Now, you need to still look at the person's specifications and the criteria for you to apply for those training programs. Just having full GMC registration is not something that would automatically make you eligible. As we said in our previous videos, there are certain competencies that you would have to meet. There are other sort of things where they might say that you need to have a certain amount of experience or you need to have this done, you need to have that done, depending on the type of training you're trying to enter into. So make sure you look at all of that ahead of time. If you're graduating and you've just basically done that kind of work in that country and you have no other qualifications or any sort of experience outside of your medical college, the chances of you being eligible then to directly enter a training program is probably fairly minimal if you actually look at what they're asking from you. That doesn't mean you can't at some point later enter into a training program. You just have to follow the same steps as the rest of us. Like I said, what this does is by graduating from these countries, you don't have to worry about PLAB. Yes, you still need IELTS or OET in order to get your GMC registration because that's a prerequisite for GMC registration where you have to prove your English competencies, but you don't need to prove anything else. Your degree effectively would grant you that registration on the basis, of course, you meeting the criteria for IELTS or OET, and then you have entered into the system. What you do after that is still the same. If you choose to do a standalone, you can do a standalone and you get your competencies that way. If you choose to enter into a trust grade job and then get your crest form signed and then enter into training, by all means, but you'd still have to build up your portfolio and you'd still have to complete the training process in the same way. The only thing is you get a little bit ahead of the rest of us by not having to need PLAB. Now the things to look out for is, I have probably waxed poetic in various posts and videos about how you don't need to worry about gaps after GMC registration or gaps after you graduate or anything like that because you know what ends up happening is you just need to explain it to GMC and they want to know your timeline and they maybe will ask you a couple of questions, you got to get a couple of forms filled and you're fine. But for those of you who are graduating from these EEA countries, that rule is much more strict. There is a whole list of things that you really need to look out for that is on the GMC website and they are very strict about you not having any gaps after you graduate or if you do have gaps only for a certain amount of time and only a certain percentage of time must be outside of clinical work. So if you're someone who has a significant gap with no clinical work that doesn't mean it's suddenly impossible for you to then get registration on the basis of your you know medical degree it's just there's a lot that you might have to prove and potentially they may ask you to to take PLAB at that point because they can feel or rightly so say that actually you've been out of clinical practice for a very long time. We don't know if you're actually meeting the criteria or the qualifications of somebody who's entering into the NHS to work as a doctor. So my advice to you is if you're sitting there and you know you're going to be graduating from one of these countries, the minute you have that medical degree, go ahead and apply for your registration. Do not under any, any circumstances Put yourself in a position where you will unnecessarily have a gap that you will then have to work to fill because like i said while it's not impossible once you have that gap to then rectify it by doing all the things that they ask of you it will be much more difficult than somebody who has a gap by by the you know other routes if they've taken plab or any postgraduate exams and on top of that it's just so unnecessary why put yourself in that position where you're already getting a leg up just go ahead and apply for registration and be on your way and then finally, I'm sure some of you will be like, okay, this is really great, but like I graduated five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, and I'm, you know, way out of the line in terms of how long it was since I graduated and where I am now. I still have an ongoing career, I've been clinically active. Would I still 
qualify to get GMC registration on this basis? And the answer is yes, we actually know a couple of people who've done that. If you've graduated from, let's say again, Romania, let's say 10 years ago, and you've stayed in clinical practice, you can apply for GMC registration. Again, just making sure you've got that English competency done and out of the way. So if you are someone who has a relevant EEA qualification, don't think you need to still be in medical school or at the very end of your medical career to think about applying for GMC registration. If it's been in the last couple of years or so, or actually, as far as I know, there isn't any sort of actual limit on it. But again, you're free to check the GMC website to see is there any sort of cutoff where they say, oh, you know, not before 1972 or something like that you would be pretty surprised to see that you would probably be all right to get GMC registration. So if that's you, if you're somebody who qualifies in that manner, why not just drop a line to GMC and see if you can, you know, get registration without having to take any exam. So if we summarize everything, number one, you may not need PLAP if you graduated from certain countries. Why? Because Basically, you're exempt on the basis of your primary medical qualification. You would still need IELTS or OET in order to apply for GMC registration because that is a prerequisite for GMC registration. You may be eligible either for provisional or full GMC registration on the basis of your country, but you have options outside of that. Just because you are exempt from PLAB does not mean you are exempt from any of the postgraduate exams, nor would that make you exempt from any of the competency requirements or portfolio requirements to enter into a specialty training program but you can still do that later on along the way. So pretty much, I think it's a pretty sweet deal. If any of y'all are graduating from any of these countries and you're wondering, should you think about the UK? I mean, I would say definitely go for it. You have effectively nothing to lose. There is no exam for you. You would get registration and you'd be ready to go. So think about it. And you have another option in front of you if you didn't know about this option before. And I think that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope it's been very useful to you. I hope it's been enlightening. I hope there's somebody sitting there who's just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Cause I think it's pretty amazing. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all the other amazing places that we exist. We've got a newsletter. If you think you need a little extra help, we also offer personalized guidance and all of that is linked below. But until next time guys, we'll see you later.